Next, State Senator Karen McConaughey holds a press conference to discuss what she sees as a conflict of interest within the Legislative Ethics Commission. As an investigation into wrongdoing by members of Speaker Madigan's office is being conducted by an attorney known to Madigan. This runs about 15 minutes. Go ahead and just give us a kind of a recap of what some of the statements have already made concerning whether or not there's a conflict with Julie Porter being the uh, special legislative inspector. Right. So I, I first want to be very clear that I, I don't have an issue with Julie Porter. Julie Porter is a former U.S. attorney and very good at what she's doing. I am on, on the Ethics Commission and think that she has done a very good job. That's really not what the point is about her. The point is, is that the four leaders, and specifically Mike Madigan, have everything to do with who gets chosen to be the Inspector General. In fact, it was Mike Madigan's own attorney who did the interviewing for the current Inspector General. That is a conflict of interest that cannot be denied. So, as good as Julie Porter might be, if the person who is responsible for hiring her is the person about to be investigated, then that is a clear conflict of interest. I don't know how that could be at all complicated or confusing for anybody. Leader Lang said uh, that uh, he doesn't understand that logic because it is an internal uh, you know, body that's supposed to investigate uh, internally. Uh, well, so it's a flawed process. So uh, I respect Leader Lang and his position, but I'm not surprised that that's his position. He's a key leader in uh, Speaker Madigan's uh, caucus, so I understand he's going to take that posture. It is a flawed process. We have talked about that for months now. Remember, let's go back to when we found 27 allegations that had been made in this building that had been sitting in a file cabinet for three years. Why? Because the leaders, in particular the Speaker of the House, failed to put forward a name for the General Assembly to approve to have an Inspector General. So, right there, how can you think it's anything but flawed? What, what do you, sorry, what do you, what do you say to, it's not Republicans who are coming out saying that it's Madigan doing retaliation. You've got two Democrats, Cassidy, and then you've also got uh, Representative Jury uh, saying that he, you know, underwent some unethical things with Madigan, but right. Jury doesn't want to go to the LIG because he thinks that it's, it's bogus. I tend to agree with him. I tend because of the process, and it gets very complicated, and it's hard for people to understand. But it's not the work of the IG that that is flawed. An IG can do an investigation, but then they turn the IG, turn, the Inspector General turns that investigation findings over to a commission that is appointed eight members of the General Assembly, appointed by their leaders. It is turned over to that group of people to make a determination as to whether or not there is any sort of wrongdoing. That is the fox guarding the hen house. The inspector general can't even initiate an investigation, any investigation, without first coming to us at the commission and getting permission. Think about that. No other state in the entire country operates that way. Only in Illinois does the independent uh, individual that's meant to investigate wrongdoing has to actually come and ask the people that they're about to investigate if they for permission to do so. Have you ever heard of anything so ludicrous in your life? And I know uh, Porter's position is temporary. When exactly does that expire and, and what are steps are being taken to fill that position once again? So uh, her appointment expires on June 30th. And, uh, and, and so the commission and or the General Assembly has options. First of all, it's up to her whether or not she wants to uh, request an extension. And if she does want an extension, the commission can extend her appointment for a period of time. The General Assembly can do that as well. But none of that happens until the leaders signal to the members on the commission that that's what needs to happen. So let's be very, very clear about what really goes on here. Eight people on the commission, two from each caucus. We all talk to our leaders and come to the Legislative Ethics Commission meeting knowing full well what it is our leaders want to have happen. I'd like to think that I operate independently. I think everybody does. But to suggest that this process is not heavily influenced by leadership, and in this particular case, the one that's being investigated or being requested to investigate is Mike Madigan, let's not in any way think that he doesn't have a lot of influence on what happens at this commission. So an inspector general can have a finding, bring it back to the commission, and the commission can vote to just sweep it under the carpet. That's what can happen. Any indicating that the 
legislative leaders are trying to fill that hole before I guess session is up or how would that op- how would that work? Sorry, say that again. Is there any indication that the legislative leaders are, are working to fill her position or get an extension? Have they communicated so, anything? So the, so the Ethics Commission has made a recommendation. If you go to the Legislative Ethics Commission website, you will see uh, that the the commission itself, we have uh, casted a vote within the commission to go to a full-time position. And we think that that's probably a good idea. I think everybody agrees that there should be somebody who's in this building on a regular basis that can answer questions, not just of legislators and employees, the general public, lobbyists, who have questions about uh, the ethics of activity that takes place in the building. So that is a positive. So I don't want to suggest that there aren't some positive things going on. Uh, There's legislation that we're working on to make a lot of changes uh, to how the Legislative Ethics Commission functions. But until until that passes both chambers, I think there's a chance that we can get some of that passed out of the Senate. But what happens when it goes over to the House? A lot of people do not believe that true ethics reform can get passed in the House. Any progress, any changes within this process that it sounds that you're I'm, I'm, right, yeah, I'm not going to say yes or no to that because once you see, you uh, acknowledge that you don't think you're going to get it done, you're probably not going to get it done. So instead, I'd rather look at the fact that we are having a very robust conversation with the courage of uh, Kelly Cassidy to come forward. Serious allegations she has made. Uh, that needs to have a process that is truly independent where the, the people of Illinois can look at and make their own evaluation that a due process was done um, and and that the people the the people of Illinois have been served well by an independent investigation that clears whether it's Mike Madigan or anybody else in this building if somebody's accused of something there needs to be an independent transparent process that determines that there has been no wrongdoing this is should we have someone outside the Capitol like a judge uh, maybe the judicial branch uh, almost, almost like a special prosecutor that would come in and ask, and and also should there be any addressing the alleged intimidation of the representative, or or is it this focusing more just on the aspect of whether or not someone is sexually harassed? Well, someone, you know, some people would tell you around here the idea of intimidation and retaliation. If you don't toe the line, is the worst kept secret in this building, um, and and Representative Cassidy. Um, has had the courage to step forward and say, that's a real problem in this building and it needs to be addressed. Um, The other part of it is, there is no way that we can with a straight face say that we have an independent investigation unless the person uh, who's doing the investigating is completely separate from the General Assembly and is chosen independently and not chosen by any of the leaders. Uh, you can't you can't say with a, for a straight face that you have an independent process until you take the politics out of it, you take the political entities out of the equation, and you give that independent individual the power to do the investigation. Remember, the way it works in Illinois is no inspector general can go and do an investigation without asking the General Assembly for permission to do so. It's the fox guarding the hen, hen house problem that we have in Illinois. And at any time, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the commission itself has a lot of power to dissect and disengage any investigation. Let me ask you this. On the other hand, there can be and have been, not in necessarily the Capitol here, but allegations that are made up. We, we've seen that where people go to jail for alleged rape that didn't happen. Right. What protections do we have? In, are, are you looking at that in this process to protect those who are charged but maybe might be innocent? I think that's a really, really great question. And so I'll give you an example. People say, well, why, why isn't everything that you work on public? Well, because uh, sadly, people do make false a- accusations. And until there is a process in place that allows an investigation into what exactly happened, you have not been given due process. It's not fair to the person who's being accused. It's not fair to the person who's doing the accusing that they get tried in the court of public opinion. So there is there is a need for a confidentiality in these investigations, but it needs to be independent. If it's independent, you don't then you're not worrying about whether or not it's being covered up or not. Madigan has sent a letter to the inspector general asking her to investigate this. I'm not sure what the timeline looks like for for getting for uh, ruling that out. Uh, I don't know what the timeline is until until uh, an actual allegation is filed. Uh, we would hope that an inspector general would be taking it up right away. But we're missing the point here. 
is the point that I'm making and others are making is that he can't ask for an investigation be done by an individual he essentially played a major role in hiring. It just doesn't pass the sniff test of credibility and transparency and independence. Until that process changes internally, you don't think that uh, uh, an investigation will get you. Well, there could, there could be an investigation, and it could be a very good investigation. I think Ju uh, Julie Porter is top-notch. Again, we're missing the point about why this is a problem. When you have a perception, oh, sorry, when you have a perception of conflict, then anything that comes out of that is already tainted. And so it's really hard for people of Illinois to believe that an invest very serious allegations and resulting investigation into an individual who had everything to do with the hiring of the person who's going to investigate them, most people would say that's a flawed process. So, so even if she takes it up, and I'm sure she'll do a good job, that really is not the point. We need to change the process and and uh, add credibility, transparency, uh, and, and true independence to the process that we have under the dome. Right now, I think it's completely ineffective. What would you suggest to somebody who does have a problem? Um, I've asked this of uh, you know, Representative Jury, for instance. He says, you know what, don't go to the LIG. Uh, Denise Rothheimer says, don't go to the LIG. It's the, the fox guarding the hen house. It's yeah. not legitimate. What's yeah. your suggestion to those in the, in the Capitol now who, who may be one of those people pulling Cassidy aside saying, thank you for speaking up. Right. You're doing what I can't do. Right. So you always have the Human Rights Commission, you have the AG's office, you have uh, your local state's attorney. I mean, there are other law enforcement agencies that can take up these issues. Uh, you're not limited to that. And I, and I want to make sure that it's clear that I'm not suggesting that the people on the Legislative Ethics Commission aren't sincere in trying to do the right thing. That's really not where the problem is. The problem is in the, in the fact that the process is so flawed that makes it very difficult for people to trust it. What you're seeing with Representative Cassidy right now is being talked about all through this building uh, for the la all, all week about employees who are going to her and saying, thank you, you're right, I have a complaint, but I'm not going to take it forward because I'm afraid of retaliation and intimidation. That is a very real problem in this building. Have you had any one-on-one -on -one conversations with Representative Cassidy about, um, you know, the allegations she's brought forward and, and what kind of has been that conversation with her, if you have? You know, I have not really talked to her specifically about her particular allegations. Um, you know, that's for her to make that case. She's making that case to you, and I think she'll make that case to the commission, of which I'm a part of, so I, I really am not doing any independent exploration with her. But, but um I mean, I think she's made her case pretty clear to the media and to the public what her concern is and what, and what uh, you know, of course she wants to take with it. Uh, that's pretty bold for a member of the Democrat House Caucus to stand up and say, I am being intimidated uh, by my leader and I am suffering retribution for it. Uh, that is a profound, uh, a profound situation that we're dealing with right now here. To hear those type of allegations come forward, or was it no. something kind of? No, I'm not shocked at all. When's uh, the next um, ethics commission meeting? Uh, I think it's sometime this week. I haven't heard what the final time or place is. And of course, that's not open to the public. Sure, right, right. but we can wait outside. <laughs> and what is? Are you looking at any prescribed punishments if someone is found to have been guilty of some sexual harassment? So that is up to the commission, and, and we have not, the commission has not actually heard any findings from the IG on, other than the, uh, the one with Iris Silverstein. Um, we have not heard any. Uh, no cases have been brought forward to the commission as of yet. So I can't, it's premature to suggest to you what the prescribed punishment might be. I guess how would you rate the inspector uh, general's or the legislative inspector general's performance since she's been put in place? I think place? she's been top notch. I give her an A plus. Again, it's not about her. It's, it's about the process. It's a flawed process, and there's a clear perception. Even if somebody wants to tell you that there is no conflict of interest, there certainly is a perception of it. And any time that you have a perception of conflict, then you have a conflict of interest. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.